me. And yeah, then you yeah. applied it to me and, and it hurt and I realised. And every time I begged to differ and you hurt me every time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So that was it. So you joined. You carried on yeah. when we started training and then it all went from there. We had great fun. The Sunday morning sessions that we did there where it was all self-defence stuff. Paul and a few of the other guys were either coming straight from the door work or a couple of hours rest and straight in there. And um, we had a lot of fun. There was a lot of characters, a lot of characters back then. Um, it's and, proper uh, training, wasn't it? It's how it should be. You yeah. Got smack, you got up, you carried on. That's how training should be. Yeah, it was, it was hard work on the Sunday mornings. Not many people liked it. There was a hardcore of a few of us who were there every Sunday. And yeah. a lot of people came and went, they, you know. But we had the hardcore, like Jez, Bruno, yourself, obviously. Uh, Matt was there. Yeah. Um, we had, uh, who else? Uh, Eddie would be there quite often. Yeah, Matt Eddie, <laughs> Jesus. That's one bloke I mess with. Yeah, that was always a fun morning when Eddie turned up. That was, uh, yeah. Was one over the bruise or two, didn't you? Yeah, just a couple, just a couple. So we've we've had you know a lot of years together, a lot of training, and uh, you know we had a lot of fun. And, and remember, Sat and Gearish as well that used to come. They were great fun yeah. as well. Those guys, nice. yeah. So so me and Paul go back now. Paul was a karate champion, kickboxer, boxer, doorman, and he's got a heck of a lot of stories. A heck of a lot of things have happened. I've got so many questions for you. Um, we've already covered some bit about the waveform stuff and then white pads and smacking stuff and having to prove stuff to you every time until we started training all the time. So we can gloss over that. Let's get onto some of the stories because there's some great ones. Now I've had so many questions, but they're roughly the same. So I'm not even going to mention the people's names because there's so many of them. Okay. So the first thing is Josh, Anthony Joshua, who you boxed. Okay. So questions are things like how good do you think he was is, uh, well, he's world class, he's proved that anyway. Yeah, um, I don't know, he lost his way with Ruiz, but that's done him a favor losing. But as most fighters do, the thing when beaten when they got that O, he's been beaten, it's done him a favor. He come back in the in the rematch, box his head off. So you can't yeah. really ask much more if he beats Fury, which you don't know until the night because I don't care who you are. If you land the punch, game over. So, as soon as it lands first, but then again, Fury's too slippery, he's too slick. He could pick him off with a jab all night and keep moving. So, yeah. I mean, everyone who's been put in front of him is beating him. So, apart from Ruiz, up to that point, he yeah. was stopping just about all of them, apart from Parker, I think. So, I mean, yeah. he's good, but then I don't think the heavyweight game is the same as it was 10, 15 years, 20 years ago. No, I don't. Uh, I think if you had Len Lennox Lewis was around today, he'd just destroy the lot. That's what I think. Yeah, but I believe it as well. Even Tyson, mate. Hey, I mean, I've seen the thing last night. Oh, Tyson weren't that good. It was an absolute animal. I mean, life took him the wrong way, drugs and birds and whatever, and everyone else shafted him. But what an animal. You'll never get a fight like that again. Never. He, he can't take away from Tyson's abilities. He, he was superb, end of story. Anybody who says different, don't know the boxing, or is just a Tyson hater. You know, he, he was good. He was not... He didn't have a long career at the top because he got... I mean, he lost when he was 23 to Buster Douglas. But yeah. he came back and won again. But he wasn't as good as he was at that 20 to 23 range. When he was fighting then, the one who fought Spinks and stuff like that, yeah, yeah he, was, he was out of this world. I still think Lennox Lewis is the best ever, along with Larry Holmes. That's my one. But there you go. Yeah. It's all about that long jab, isn't it? Yeah. So the next question we've been asked about is... Not many people know this, there was a few did, was that you as a sparring partner with Tyson, for Tyson Fury when no one else would step up to the plate. And he gave you a big shout out about that. Um, I can't remember which fight it was when he gave you the McDermott. shout out. McDermott. 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 Yeah. So what a question is, what was it like sparring with uh, Tyson Fury? I loved it. I mean, the first time, someone's put it in the book. He said they pulled me out when he was an amateur. I, I think I was pro at about six, eight fights. Um, and spied him when he was just back to turn pro. He boxed yeah. me head off, and I thought, even said to him after that fight, you'll beat all the British heavyweights now. And he hadn't even turned pro. Um, right. And then John McDermott fight, I don't know, I can't remember the reason why now, but he was struggling to get sparring. No one was sparring. I don't know why. An old uh, 
silly bollocks here. I said, yeah, yeah, I'll spy you. So I went up to Manchester a couple of times. Um, we had some good sparring. I went to his uncle's uh, backyard as well. Right. Yeah, it's weird. He just drops down to your level, long reach, but I tried to put it on him. And I swear to God, every time I went there, he tried to knock me out, but it never did. Right. So he looked after me paying wise. He's always good as gold. Um, I just gutted because he's meant to open the gym for me. He said he'd come down, never turned up. That's anything I was gutted with. Ah, oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he's good fire. But the other question people were asking was, is it, you know, he comes across as crazy, blah, 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 on, on YouTube and all that sort of stuff. Is he that crazy in real no, life when you're with him? Or? Yeah, well, he's mad, but he's, he's sound, like most right. fighters are. Nine, nine times out of ten, every fight you meet, it's, it's, it'll give it the big announced social media. That's the sell yeah. the fight and get a fight. So, but like most fighters, he's bang on because he ain't got to prove anything. No, 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 exactly. I mean, we've seen that with yourself and other people. You don't need to prove anything, you're just there, yeah. and that's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, for those who don't know, Paul is a big lump, a big, <laughs> big old dude, and one of the nicest people you'll ever wish to meet when we training and stuff on the Sunday mornings when it was dangerous stuff if you wanted to be training somebody safe it would be Paul because you know he wouldn't purposely hurt you but you knew so, you know what a, a thing to have as well is listen to everyone if it works yeah. keep it even if they're talking absolute rubbish just listen to them take it in don't be an arrogant prick and just if it works keep it if it don't bin it simple as that isn't it if, yeah. if it works you know, and if it works, great. If it doesn't work, you learn You learn another thing as well. Don't use what they're doing, you know. And then, yeah, but sometimes people get too involved in the ins and outs of stuff and exactly how it should be, you know. I mean, as long as you're getting your body weight behind a punch, you're going to punch hard. Some people can do it naturally. Other people need to be taught. I mean, some people saying about, do you think a puncher is natural? Or can it be taught? Well, before Paul answers that, I'll answer it a little bit because Paul it a lot harder when he'd been helped how to hit harder. Yeah. But he hit hard, but he hit harder when he'd been helped how to hit harder. His hawks, by the way, them white pads, we got to the stage where people were having to hold four of them. I don't know if you recall that, Paul. Yeah, that's hooking properly, not turn your fist over. It's, it's all about the rotation of the foot, your hips, your legs, your shoulders, it's all together, your back. And this yeah. is what I keep saying on YouTube at the minute, all these boxing trainers reckon they can do this, they can do that, and some muppet in his backyard. But no one breaks it down from the foot, the pivot, the hips, pushing through the leg, the back, the traps, everything else that comes into it. And that's what boxing is lacking in training as well. Yeah, yeah. Which you, um, you, help, you help me do, start off with as well, you know, pushing through the feet, and pushing through the leg, getting the rotation, snapping, yeah, I mean, and for those who don't know, haven't felt it, those white pads, when you have to hold four of them because if he, he's hitting them, <laughs> you know it's a hard hit. And a couple of the boxing trainers that came over, I don't know if you remember that, uh, Ron, who was over from America, who, who did some pads with you, and he yeah. was trainer for Kirk Johnson at the time. He was a top 10 heavyweight. Yeah. And uh, he said himself that Paul was the hardest hitting heavyweight he'd ever held the pads for. But I, I never is... really brought that out in the fights. That's the only thing. I mean, I stopped. I only stopped three out of forty-one yeah. fights, and I, know I could bang out, and that's down to preparation. And pff, that's the only. Thing. I know I, could, I know I can bang, but I just didn't put that into the fights a lot. Yeah, it was one of the things I used to say to you: dominate and intimidate because you're big enough, strong enough, and good enough. But well, remember that amateur fight, the third amateur fight. I oh, was that? Leg, that... Oh, <laughs> it was out yeah, for twenty odd minutes. <laughs> Yeah, could have a pin oh. drop in there, couldn't you? Oh, for Paul knocked this guy out. I mean, this guy was a lump. He was he, he made you look small, didn't he? Yeah, but he started and, smiling at me. And I just got the ump. I yeah. thought, mate, what are you smiling at? Yeah. So he had it. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul gave him oh, he was unconscious on the first punch, I think. And then the ref was going over, but Paul was in the middle of a combination. I think he landed three or four shots after he was unconscious. And this guy, every single one of them would have been a knockout punch. The guys hit the deck. Everyone's wee. And then everybody went quiet because he wasn't moving. 
and wasn't getting up. And then do you remember the noise of him of his breath on the ring? Yeah, it was all sound like a Dyson Uber. Yeah, the whole ring was vibrating and it made this noise and it was an eerie, horrible noise. And his feet were twitching and it was like Rocky IV, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was bad. And uh, what well, I'm saying, you you've got to get an ambulance, got to get an ambulance. And I don't know if you recall, Paul, we was in the changing room afterwards and he was sort of like sat on a stool with his legs splayed out like that. And I, I can't remember which way round it was, but he said, I'm in the red corner. I'm in the red corner. <laughs> he was saying, but he was blue or whichever way round it was. Well, I, think I spoke to him. I spoke to his dad a few years after. He had, he had memory loss after that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And one, of the, one of the coaches told me, I think it was on a Friday, wasn't it? The fight. Yeah. And I, I think they said it was Tuesday before he got his memory back. So, That'll well, give... that's, that's how dangerous the sport is as well. Yeah. And how hard somebody like Paul punches. Okay, we've got to get on to a couple of other things now. We've got a cheeky question here for you, Paul. Yeah, uh, do you still have the bite marks? Now, before we don't start thinking the wrong things, that's from the Chisora fight. <laughs> Not from oh, any hey, missus downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he bit me with a gum shield. Right. I took, I took that fight about a week's notice. Um, I thought I won the first fight with Chisora. Um, yeah. But the thing that, that first fight with Chisora, we had already warmed up to go in, but it was a floating bout. And if I, I, I believe if I had gone in when I was warmed up at that first point, I would have beat him. I put yeah. Dan in the first fight as well. It should have been a draw, I thought. He, he, he landed clean shots. Second fight, I took a week's notice, eight rounder. Um, I was in the ring, he's done his usual crap, putting his fist behind his back and all this stuff. He couldn't knock me out and he's trying his hardest to come into a clinch. Never see on YouTube, he bites me on the ear, but he's got his gum shielding. So there weren't no bite marks because he still had his gum right. shielding. When Tyson spat it out, didn't he? And ripped yeah. his chunk out. Um, yeah, she's all bit me with a gum shield. You heard me effing blind and what have you. The ref yeah. had a look and he didn't get banned until after the fight because the replay had it, the ref didn't see it. So right. as for teeth marks, no, because he had his gum shielding. So you can imagine it's still hurt. That's why I made my <laughs> noise. Yes. Now, I take it you're still the best of friends and you wish him all the best, eh? No, he's the biggest dick in boxing. He gives it a big one and he's a prick. And I've met loads of fighters all across Europe. Everyone's been bang on. He's just a dick. I didn't get an apology, which I should have got a written apology. Nothing. The board banned him too. Uh, did it what he get? Years banned or six months? Can't remember. But he's a tool. How he's still getting title shots. I know he's banged out some lads recently, but draws me out. In his yeah, what, what shocked me with Chisora is that, um, one, he went the distance with Klitschko. Yeah, fair play to him on that. Yeah. And two, that all of a sudden they're touting him as a as a, as a decent heavyweight and a, and a world contender. Yeah, but that, do you know what? That's social media now. Back, back in... Fuck it, I sound old, don't I? Back in my day, when I was a boy... <laughs> The old you had to day. buy boxing news. You had to buy boxing news in the newspapers to find mm. out what was going on. And now, like social media, it's just flooded with self-obsessed retards that can hardly fight. I'm not saying obviously the top lads. It's it's good for matchroom and stuff to push fighters, but a lot of these fighters are coming through. They ain't all that. They're not taking fights. They're fighting idiots, which are about fifteen fights, not proving anything. Yeah. The ticket sellers, and that's that's how it goes now. It's all it's all about social media. Well, when you yeah, can get exactly YouTube, right. when you can get a couple of YouTubers making more money than boxers. Oh, that, that was a joke, wasn't it? I'd fight both of them on the same night. I'd fight them now. The slim as I am. <laughs> I'd, I'd fight them. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, unbelievable. Shocking, right? oh. Well, well, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now, the people asking about Chisor, I think because he's uh, in the limelight at the minute, Does it? how, does, how hard does he hit compared to the other fighters that you've fought and as... He, he don't hit that hard. Do you know what? He put me down in the eighth round fight as well on one knee. And I got back up. But with that, I mean, as you can see, when I got in with uh, Joshua, I got back up. Yeah. And the reason for that, and not a lot of people know this, is I had 10 weeks to train for the fight. So I was probably the fittest I'd be. Yeah. That's why I got back up. When you go into other fights where you've had them at like 24 hours notice, three days notice, and you get caught with a shot because you're not fit, that's when you get spark code. I mean, yeah. Chisora, I couldn't bang me out because he's wet lettuce, but <laughs> yeah, it's just, I wouldn't say bangs. I mean, I wouldn't say Tyson Fury bangs. We've talked about this before. I think he could lot of, hit a lot harder just by pushing through a bit more. 
But which yeah. I think he did change in the last fight because he stopped thinking, didn't he? He went, he yeah, went a bit, a bit to the old school with the old crew in, in the States, didn't he? So, yeah, he, was, he was, went to the Cronk gym and started. But you could see he changed the way he was throwing his right hand now. Yeah. And his jab. He, he was putting a lot more into it, I thought. But, uh, yeah. And uh, the, another question is, um, again, Chisora. And this is the end of him then. We don't have to speak about the, that guy ever again after this one. How do you think he'll get on against Usyk? Sm smashed, hopefully. Who's that sure? Sorry, my lad just walked in then. <laughs> just yeah. get the t shirt. Like, what are we doing? Uh, How do you think Jazora will get on against Usyk? Uh, he's a danger man, isn't he? Chizora now, though. He, he can he, he seems to be hitting a lot harder because he's stopping people, good fighters. Um, but I think use it, he'd be too much. He can, he's got too much of a boxing brain. Too fast, too light on his toes. Get out of the way quick. He can see what's coming. He can block, defend. The people just do everything, can't he? So. Yeah, and Usyk's not that small. He's, you know, yeah. He's gonna be, he's gonna be what two fifteen, two twenty. Yeah, it ain't small, is it? You no, know, six three, two twenty. It's not small, is it? Especially yeah, that, when you're that, rich. That, I mean, I'm six three. Like yeah. ten, fifteen years ago, that was a big heavyweight. Yeah, Obviously, now it's monsters, isn't they? Six five, six nine, seven foot, whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's still a big heavyweight. But six three two twenty rips is still a big heavyweight, or was a yeah, he yeah, was a standard heavyweight. This yeah. Man, agent. yeah, so I think I think Usyk will destroy him myself. I hope he does anyway. I like Usyk. Yeah, I think he will. Yeah, too much room. Okay, a couple of questions about door work for you now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for those that don't know, Paul was doing door work when we was training together years ago, and uh, he's been done a lot of door work. He doesn't do that anymore though. I don't think. Anyway, he's doing your other stuff now. Yeah. Anyway, so um, we expect to see him on TV soon, hopefully. Anyway, so the door work, Paul. Some of the questions was, um, what was the most frightening night you've ever had working the doors? Uh, none, really, because I'm one of these weirdos that don't... I do get frightened, but I can tend to cope with it pretty well. So... Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't. Obviously, I had mad ones where people were smacking me with chairs and bottles and jumping on me and punching me and women scratching me and pulling knives. But I don't know because I've, I've got this weird thing in my head where I can just control it and deal with it at the time, and I probably think about it afterwards. Yeah, but yeah. I'll be, I'll be more scared in the job what I'm doing now. To tell the truth, right. things what have happened there. That, that's like I thought. Because obviously yeah. I'm, I'm there to, as a professional, trying to be professional. I can't really just defend myself, can't. I defend myself, but I can't let it rip a little bit. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you, you can't drop them with a left hook to the body. No, uh, obviously no. I'll be professional. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, for those who don't know, Paul works for the collection company that's on TV a lot in England. DCBL, so I'm a high, high point enforcement agent. Yeah, so apparently they're on TV in England a lot. I've not seen it, so I don't know, but apparently they're on there. And uh, so, yeah, so hopefully you will all see Paul on your big screens once uh, all this lockdown stuff's over. It needs, it needs to be a big screen. It needs to be a wide screen anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we used to always rib each other about weight and stuff, so we can say it. Um, okay, Paul, yeah, what people yeah. have just said is that on the surface, Boxing seems like a dirty business. But behind the scenes, we all know it's a filthy, dirty, rotten, disgusting, low-down, dirty business. Yeah. Apart from a few people, of course. So what's the biggest rip-off that you've had in your career? I haven't really had one. There you go. I, I, do you know why? Because I tell him, you, you got to understand, with these promoters and what have you, you need to be the boss. I can understand kids get ripped off, but you're there. You're getting in the ring. So you stick your contract up your ass, and I'll tell you how it's going to be. Um, I, did, I think I did late, later part of my career with Carl Greaves. I did like four years with him, five years, and Carl was bang on. You had to put... So, this is why I kept going on the road, because you'd put... It's obviously, it's on ticket sales. You put a grand into the show, £500 for your opponent, and you'd split whatever with Carl. And sometimes, I didn't have no make no money and Carl would still bung me money which he didn't have to do and which a lot of promoters don't do yeah. and then if I could go on the road I could go 
So I'll be sitting at home, get a phone call. Paul, do you fancy it tomorrow? I'll be doing it, mate. Yeah, but it's three grand. Behave yourself, go away. Then he'll phone you back. Right, it's four grand, Paul. Do you want to do it four grand? I'm like, mate, I've not even been training. I said, I'm at work. He goes, yeah, meet me. Stan said tonight, we'll fly out tomorrow. We'll, we'll get it on. This was Andy and Louis that I was with for a bit in Bedford. Um, and they'll come back. All right, six grand, final offer. Yeah, yeah, go on in. <laughs> and that's how it was. You jump out. So you're probably getting three, four hundred pounds a fight, boxing someone you can beat. When I could fight someone who's won a bronze medal in the Olympics at short notice, flying out to Germany the next day for decent money. And that's that's what I did in the end. Yeah, you know, yeah, don't blame me. I was fighting don't like eight, ten round as I was agreeing to. And this was like the next day. It's even like Jonathan Banks, like three days' notice. And the public don't see this as well. They look at me, they probably look at some of my fights on YouTube. Ugh. Butlin's back over on his ass again, the dollard. I mean, I was on the floor more, more times than the carpet fitter half the time. But the fact is, I've took the fight 24 hours now yeah. to a different country, and I'm fighting a prospect, a good, strong lad, not some muppet has been sweeping the bloody road. Do you know what I mean? He's a good good fighter. And I was lasting, see, lasting the time. You see, to me, that's the dirty side of boxing, is that the... The, the guy that they want, the one that they want to promote, the one that's going to get pushed, the one that's going to be a star, hopefully in the future, they they make sure that on those first few fights and on that run-up, they're calling people like you up with one day's notice. Yeah. Knowing that you haven't trained, knowing that if you have been training, this could be a, this could be a banana skin. Do you know what? You I, I've stitched, I got stitched up about three or four times. Um, I yeah. fought a lad called... Sebastian Cobra from Bronze Olympics. It was 11 0, 10 knockouts. We went out there, we beat him. They've, they, someone's put it on face on uh, YouTube one round. Um, we beat him. I seen Mickey Van after the fight. I said, What do you reckon to that? Man? He goes, At least I'll give you a draw. I beat a kid in Switzerland, which I complained about, never got reversed. But then he went to fight him for some world titles. Um, a bloke in Poland again went to fight him for world titles. So I were beating these kids. I mean, I mean, I got punched in the in the nuts in one fight in Scotland. I forgot who it was. I'm shocking the names. Um, and again, he waved off the fight. I got punched in the nuts. What are you doing? I was walking out from the crowd on that fight and they're spitting at me. No security. Chucking beer over me. And that's in Scotland. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's just mad. Yeah, to me, that that's what I mean. That's To me, that's the dirty side of the business when they're... They're, they're cherry picking, like that, knowing that somebody isn't in training, blah, blah, blah. I don't blame them because you do the same, you know, for your own people. But, but they're paying you good though as well. That's what I mean. You have going to a local show where you're guaranteed a win. It's not really exciting, a four-rounder. And you probably get, if you sell 100 tickets, you'll probably get like six, 600 quid. Yeah. Yeah, I can get six grand fighting someone the next day. No, you know what I mean? It's no brain, isn't it? Yeah, you take the six grand, don't you? Yeah. It's done. Now, uh, somebody else said, uh, how did it feel when you knocked that guy out, can't remember his name, prize fighter? Colin Kenner. Do you know, the only thing that miffed me off about that, I didn't get praise for it, because Colin Kenner was ranked number 10 in Britain at the time. I yeah. bowled him over, um, got in the second one, and I had a boxer in the semis. But for me, I felt like I won the whole thing knock, knocking him out. But I never got. Yeah, well, he was the favourite, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, if I got in a different draw and I got in the final, I'd have had it in the final. Yeah, with the Irish kid Rogan, I reckon. You know what I mean? But I got in with that like, Commonwealth Games, and he boxed me. Off to be fair, but yeah, I, I think I was buzzing more than anything because I, I stopped him. But no, yeah, nothing, yeah. I never got, I never got bigged up about anything. Like, he's ranked tenth in Britain. I bowled him over. Surely I should have gone up in the rank. I think I went to number 13 anyway in the rankings. But then after that, um, I had a fight against Vidos in Italy. Again, 24 hours notice, same scenario. Do you fancy it? Yeah, put me over in the first round. Then the rankings go back again. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. But... Yeah, it's, it's the way of the world. Once you, you know, once those rankings change, it's all over and it? it all changes. Yeah, I just thought, I don't know what records are for DJs, let's just go and have it. And I've got more stories than a lot of fighters would have now. I mean, I don't think you, a lot of heavyweights would get the opportunity to go out to Europe now and do what I did because everything's no. changed. 
sanctioning no. fees a change you probably pay more and i don't think the board would allow it no no i mean for those who don't know paul was on one of the klitschko bills i can't remember who klitschko was fighting uh, uh the younger one yeah it was he vladimir fought. but who was he fighting i can't remember he was going to fight david a but he pulled out and he fought oh god he's gonna blow me head up now i, I can't remember who it was i can't remember but yeah, triple g triple g was on the bill that was the sebastian cobra bill that was on my first was time it? out in germany yeah jonathan banks i boxed on um klitschko yeah. bill. it was just launched against is it adamic the cruise cruise world fight then he moved oh. to heavyweight and old uh yeah. nuts here got on with him three days notice yeah of course <laughs> that's still on three days notice if it had been four days you'd have won yeah, but he was wicked, he was. Really yeah. loose on the fit. He put me down in the first round, got back up, carried on. Manuel Stewart come after the fight. He's like, you're tough, man, you're tough. They didn't expect me to carry on. Yeah. But I thought, you know what, that's what you paid me for. Come on in. Right, nice one. Nice. I mean, for a Manu Stewart to say that, you know you are tough. Yeah, to meet him as well. It was nice. You know what I mean? It's mental. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and we knew he was tough anyway. <laughs> back in the <laughs> Shagai F. Ah, yeah, Ruslan Shagai Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was a good fighter as well. He was good. Yeah, he was. He was good. You know? And anybody who could do a Sunday morning session with us and Eddie back then <laughs> was definitely tough. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. Um, hold on. Sorry, I've lost some of my questions here. Now, okay. Yeah, here we are. Um, how scared were you when you got shot at? Truthfully, shit myself. <laughs> I bet. Um, so, me, me, I was with Carl Greaves. We flew out in the morning. Um, there's two two bills on the same night. I'm not sure if it's the same promoter or two different promoters. M MTK, which yeah. was, was it MD? I can't remember the old name before I changed it. And Frank Wall. So we've gone in there, and I've I've met the kid. I'm fighting. Loads of people in this thing. Everyone's weighing in. We heard a gunshot. The next thing, the whole crowd moves. What, I thought, what's going on here? I thought, a load of fighters in here. You're all pegging it. I look around. Carl Greaves already bolted out the door. Everything <laughs> got in slow motion. So I've shot out with him. I said, what's up, what's up, what's up? And then another gunshot. He goes, someone's been shot. I went, behave. This foreign bloke ran out. He, go, he goes, um, IRA, IRA. I said, mate, we'd all be dead. I said, just keep running. <laughs> yeah. Shot up this road a bit further down. This other bloke come out holding another lad. had been shot in the leg. Uh, ran into this pub. It was on the news straight away. Um, I went down, back down, seen the promoter, looked down in reception, there's a bloke covered up, he's been shot in the face. Um, I don't know what it was over, um, but we flew back in the afternoon. So what, what it was, two dressed up with coppers, AK-47s, shot one bloke in the face, shot another one in the leg. I think there was a man and a woman in there as well. They had pistols. So I don't know. I don't know the ins outs and what happened, but it, 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 that was mental. Yeah, I thought it's game but, over. At least they didn't spray the crowd anyway. Yeah, I mean the last thing you expect when you're getting ready for a boxing match is uh, people to come in with AKs and stuff like that and nuts, nuts. Yeah, that, that was that was in Belfast. What a lovely place that is. But like I say, went out, went out in the morning, come back in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, don't blame you. <laughs> I take it you haven't been back since. No, no, I, I would do those. It's a nice place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, uh, another one here. What is the best place you've visited when you've been fighting? Probably Dusseldorf. Um, yeah, Dusseldorf on the Klitschko Bill. That's a real nice place. I went to right. Hamburg. Um, that's somewhere you go and die. Never seen so many unhappy people in all my life. Right. Uh, no one smiles or anything. <laughs> Where else been? Italy. I've been to Germany three or four times, I think. Italy. Um trying to think where I've been Switzerland right God knows I can't remember the list goes on mate but yeah that's definitely Dusseldorf's the nicest place right and what were the clips goes like and did they treat you fair they always do go abroad mate it's mental so you right. get expenses you get wicked hotels um, they pick you up in these big Audis we drive the champ on the side um, and everything's even the after parties everything's bang on can't fault them 
abroad, it's down to a tee, even the public. Boxed in Poland as well. And you know what? The public come out after. Just been filled in <laughs> by their <laughs> fighter. And they're like wanting pictures. Cuddling you, shaking your hand. It's wicked. Fantastic. Yeah, it's refreshing. But it's nice. Bit different in the UK, huh? Yeah, there's white bogeys on you and just smack around the back of the head. You're wasting <laughs> <Yeah. space. laughs> yeah. It's a strange old world, isn't it? It's the way we are. It's a strange old world. So, yeah. uh, there are some training questions for you now. Okay, so what would a normal training session be when you're getting ready for a big fight? Well, there'll be lots of different types of training sessions, but... Yeah, I normally get up at like five o'clock, do my runs. Um, I'd come back, have something to eat, have a shower, go back to bed. This was before kids. Yeah. Um, just chill out all day, sorting your food out, eating every three hours. Um, and I was training at night, that could be pad work, I could be sparring. You're training every day, six Sunday off. And that's how yeah. I normally went. The later part of my career, I was sort of training myself. I was getting up at five getting back sorting the kids out then i'll go work eight till five i'll get back from the work at like five then i'll get down my gym from six till nine and i did that for two years and i was fighting on top so that's what ruined me in the end that's why i thought i'm 40 years old time to get out yeah yeah it's crazy schedule crazy schedule uh yeah, this so is it's one not, it's not all people think fighters are all the same that they're not i mean like joshua the one the avas won the gold it's there already. They sign a massive million dollar contract or whatever million pound contract. They have nutritionists, uh, they have masseurs, they have everything. You know what I mean? It's all set up beautiful from nine times yeah. out of ten. You've got lads, they've got to work full time as well, the kids, and they make subtle money. And that's the reality side of the boxing. Yeah, yeah. People don't see the 90 odd percent of fighters who have to have a job as well. Yeah, it's not no. all glam. No, 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 no. People think it is, but uh, this yeah, is a quick one for, for Bal. The schnozzle, it's called Rosa Sear. It's gradually going. <laughs> it was a lot redder <laughs> last week. <laughs> it's gradually going. Okay, that's all it is. No idea why. 54 years with a perfect complexion. Get to 55 and bang. Wallop. Uh, bang, coronavirus kicks in. Yeah, there you go. I'll blame it on that. <laughs> right? So that's it. That's the elephant in the room, Bell. That's that sorted. <laughs> Everyone going. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so... Um, how far would you run on, on your training? Uh, I'll probably do to like bridge. three to four. <laughs> About to three to four bridge. miles. But yeah. What I'll do as well, so I'll time myself, write it down in a book. Next time I'll go out a little bit faster. Next time I'll go out a little bit faster and then get that yeah. faster and faster until you peak before you fight. So every that's how I cheat every fight. First week, I'll just get back into it. Second week. So if I had time to train for fights, six to weeks, which rarely happened, that's what yeah. I'll do. And then you're hitting your peak at the right time and you're ready to fight. So then you just go out for the run for the sake of it. You plan it out. You have little hills. You have little bursts. You know where to stop. You know what to beat. And then that way you know you're getting fitter. Yeah, yeah. We hated the runs when we did them. Oh, I did. Yeah, well, I've got tendonitis in my Achilles. It's, I struggle to run now. I mean, I ran the other day. I'm 21. Well, I'm not. I'm 20 stone, eight pound now. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I, I, I thought I thought there was an earthquake, and then I realised it was just you going out for a run. Yeah, mum, dad felt it in Spain. It was a bit <laughs> yeah, bad, I but... say, yeah, it was yeah. rare as well. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sparring. When you're sparring, getting ready for a fight, do you spar to knock the other guy out? Listen, it's a... of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course you do. <laughs> It's a bit like having a fight. Everyone says, no, we shouldn't go full pelt. But I guarantee the person you're fighting is trying to rip your head off. Um, I mean, th th this is when I knew my career was over. Um, there's a bloke called John Ashton. He brought his lad down. Looked at him. Didn't look no special. I think it was in my last year or so fighting. It, people come to me, Jim, and I'll be like, do you fancy a spa? I'm like, yeah, yeah, have it. I looked at his lad. I thought, come on. And he put me over twice. Right. And that's when I knew I was ageing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that was that was a shock. I, mean, I can't remember the kid's name now. I feel bad for not remembering. But it, it, it was going to turn pro and never did. But yeah, sparring. I mean, I had some wars with Matt Skelton. I think I sparred Matt Skelton for about eight title fights. Oh, yeah, yeah, We yeah, had yeah. it every time. We had it. Um, I sparred John, John McDermott, Pele Reed, uh, obviously Tyson. 
list goes on, mate. And every time, I mean, I mean, I shared a video the other day. If I put someone over, I wouldn't just spit at them and walk over to the other side. Obviously, I'll make sure they're okay. Yeah, um, yeah, you get in there, you have a spy, you, you, you want to hurt them. You train, didn't you? Land the body yeah. shot, head shot, you want to stick it on them. It's not, it's not a tickling contest. It ain't Taekwondo, you know what I mean? You go in there for a <laughs> I've got a sparring story uh, with me and this guy. He hit me in the body, right? <laughs> <laughs> it lifted me up. Everybody knows jigsaw mats, a lot of martial artists listen to this. It lifted me up, two mats across and one back. I hit the floor. I'm on all fours like that. Pull your oh, my ribs, my ribs, my ribs. Now, at the time, we would often joke about get being hurt. And when somebody came up to see if you're all right, you jump on them. So Paul's going to me, get up, get up, you're all right. I go, no, no, you've really hurt me, Paul. You've really hurt me. No, you're all right. Get up. No, no, you've really hurt me, Paul. He thinks I'm joking and then just hoofs me a kick straight in the ribs. Where he just dropped me. And that was straight to hospital, four broken ribs. Thank you very much, Paul. I thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> there you go. That was a good That's one. That was that, wasn't it? That's how we trained back then. Uh, and there's a guy called Joe just come on saying that uh, you broke his ribs. And I don't Joe give out went. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he broke my ribs. yeah, yeah, Joe. Yeah, he, same to me. He's done it to me. Um, okay, some more questions that are coming in live then. So uh, what do you think of Lucas Brown from Scott? Uh, <laughs> took him, I think, as like a week's notice. Do you know what? He's nice and upload. The only thing I don't agree with is this, this steroids part, which yeah. most of them on now. You can tell who's on them. If you can't, you're stupid. I've been training since I was 16. You know as much as I do. I've never had the body where I've been amazing. I just don't gifted like that. No matter how hard I train, I just don't gifted like that. And you see blokes get in now. They're banging like anything. They've got traps sticking out the back of their head. You can tell they're on the juice. So can't fault him. Real nice bloke. Obviously, we had a fight. But I just don't agree with the steroid part. I believe he should have been banned for all his, the rest of his career. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't like agree many, more. But yeah, no, he, he, Lucas Brand's all right. He's a nice little bloke. Yeah, he do Nice bloke or not, if you're on the gear, you shouldn't be fighting. I, you know. Yeah, but what's their full potential off the gear? And how do you know they're not on the gear? I mean, everyone goes, yeah, but they get tested. Yeah, but so do bodybuilders. Because the size of them, Mr. Olympia, they all get tested. Yeah, they're not on it. They just have three weeks of it. Stay. Behave yourself. So, no, no. It's high-protein diet that does it. It's, it's high-protein, low-carb. Yeah, yeah. High-protein, low-carbs, and uh, an energy drink. That's yeah. what does it. Yeah, you're all right with that. But, yeah, I mean, and it, you know, that's, yeah, steroids and stuff. I, I believe that almost every single professional fighter – is on it almost every single one, they're, they're high high level. Level. especially the high end. Fight. I mean, even in like tennis and all sorts, because everyone else is on it. Let, let me just put it out there as well with steroids, it don't make you a better fighter. You're either gifted the way you are, the way you train, it don't make you a better fighter. Perhaps make you go for longer, you hit harder, but it don't make you a better boxer. People forget that. So, I can understand the cheating part, but it doesn't change the way they fight. It probably just makes them dig a bit harder or last a bit longer in the fight. Yeah, it can't increase their skills. And it no. and like we've always said, you can't put muscle on your jaw. Yeah. That's that's the that's the phrase I used on the door many a time. Yeah. <laughs> you normally used to pick them up and throw them out. Yeah, like what are you doing? Behave. <laughs> Yeah, it's like when they carry a bag that's so heavy, their tricep pops out. Yeah, the gordo is pushing down on it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, happens all the time. Um, so, oh yeah, Whip saying, have you managed to cope with the ginger ginger afro here during lockdown? Any tips? Dagan, Whip over, you know, Whip. Yeah. How have you managed to cope with the ginger afro here during lockdown? Any tips? Shave it. Yeah, he's doing all right. Yeah, he's doing all right. He's doing all right. So, another one saying here. Okay. What about bungs in boxing? Have you ever heard of anybody taking a dive? No, I've seen a question over there on a boxing site about that. Uh, no, never. 
I don't know if yeah. I don't know if that happens or people get offered more money, but I've never seen it and I'd never do it. Um, yeah, I don't even know if that still goes on. I know it used to, didn't it? Back in the day. Well, I know, I know, I I absolutely know of some kickboxers, a world champion who uh, accepted money. All oh, right, for you know, for a fight. Yeah. Remember my first kickboxing fight? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Flew well, that was in Kent, wasn't it? Yeah, I threw everything into that first round. I think the first time in the ring. Second yeah. round, I've tried again. I've looked at, I just put my hands on my knees, looked at the ref, I said, I'm done. They said, what? I'm done, mate. And just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. I'm knackered. Yeah, Let's go. Let's, then my car broke down on the way back. <laughs> yeah, nightmare. But then that realised how fit you got to be to fight yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, we kept saying to people at the gym, "You got to, you got to be a lot fitter than you think." <laughs> right? And I had that, I had that weird, I had a weird engine. I did where, even now, I mean, I could still do eight rounds, I believe. I've got a weird yeah. engine. Yeah, I didn't used to drink or smoke back then, but now I do drink. Yeah, but it won't do you any harm, Paul. You're allowed it now. You've retired. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I've got three kids now. No, well, I'm gonna need a drink. You need a drink. You need a drink. Yeah. But I mean, you know, train like that, what people don't realise is people say they're fit and you say to them, if you think you're fit, try a round of boxing. Yeah. And it's that simple. Because I, I remember when we were training, quite a few of the lads, like Lardy Boy, would come over from the weight training side and come and train with us and they couldn't believe how hard it was. No, you can't. It's, it's, I believe it's one of the ultimate sports as well as, I mean, I've got Respect now for rugby as well, because my lad plays rugby. And the battle and the whole body takes doing that game, that's mental as well. Yeah. MMA, again. So, any contact sport, really. Proper contact sport. Don't let me go on about taekwondo and all them more pits. But I'm on about proper contact. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a proper contact when we were training. That's for sure. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. <laughs> It was, um, we were doing some filming for those who don't know this one. We we're doing some filming back at the gym, and I asked Paul to demonstrate the low kick. I don't know if you remember on the video that we did when you kicked Steve Kelly in the leg. When you did oh, that, Steve, you he's, like an, he's like a gymnast, wasn't he? He's flying about all over the shop. <laughs> when you did the onto the head first and then did the kick, yeah. Oh yeah. dear, I've never heard anybody squeal like that and the thing is on the video it the, the guy doing the video switched the video off when he was on the floor <laughs> and we was looking after steve trying to help him and then turned around and said have oh, you got this no i switched it up and switch it back on so it looked like it only took steve a minute or two to recover but it was ages it was ages poor old poor old guy that was horrible that worry <laughs> and he didn't even and paul didn't even put it in and for those who don't know Back then, he could do spinning hook kicks onto the speed ball and stuff. Like that. You could really kick, couldn't you? And yeah, you got... I got down to uh, the Shinkai. And I started yeah. doing a bit. I was giving it all the kicks and <laughs> still do it all. Next yeah. day, Malcolm couldn't walk. I was crippled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was, oh. But I remember Paul doing some kicks on the speed ball that we had at the gym. And I said to him, I said, flip it neck, Paul. <laughs> some of your size throwing kicks like that. You don't like the look of that coming in. But there you go. Yeah. 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 Whip. Yeah. We were. Yeah. Poor old Steve. We were saying. <laughs> saying yeah. Steve's poor always like bombing about in the videos, wasn't he? He was oh, there. He was there. He was there. But, yeah. But <laughs> you've got to hand it to Steve. First one. Always the first one. So I'll have a go at that. <laughs> really? Yeah. I reckon <laughs> he's got a bit of a fetish. <laughs> yeah. I reckon. But, poor. Blimey. Um, and it reminds also Sat and Gearish used to train with us better. They were the first ones to volunteer when Eddie was there. Yeah, Eddie was a nutter, wasn't he? Yeah. Great. S-I-S. What a great guy, Eddie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Great guy. Great guy. I mean, oh, those Sunday morning sessions, something to remember. Something to remember. So, Oh, oh, yeah. Um, if you'd had the proper training and the proper respect, not respect, I don't know why I put respect in there, but if you got the proper training and help, how far, how well do you think you could have got on? 
many people don't know. I mean, I started boxing when I was 24. Mm. Um, and I turned pro at 26. I only had 12 amateur, so I didn't really learn the game. So for that, I think I did quite well anyway. Yeah. Um, it started off really well in Coventry. Um, with Houston, Kevin Houston, who's now doing time for murder, I think, or something. Um, but we had a nice little stable there. We had local shows, and I was doing really well. It was just getting the mix with the right trainer. I mean, I had no graft here as my first trainer. It we gelled really well. And I think if I'd have stayed with him, I'd have gone a lot further. And then I'd, I'd change different people there, different people there. Then you get messed about and then fights are cancelled. And that's a lot of time I just went, you know what? So, yeah, I think, I mean, I could have gone a lot further, but that's just not exciting. I mean, I could say I, I could have gone further, but you never know. Could have been a contender, Charlie. Who knows? That's could have been, you don't know, dear. Yeah. The right place, well, right time and all that and the right fight. But that's well, why I took these fights as well, these hard fights. I could stop one of these. Who knows where I could be as well? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Always worth the risk. Always worth the risk. Yeah. I mean, for those who, uh, other people who don't know this, Errol Graham used to become down trained with us a lot. And Errol wanted to look after Paul and he thought you could do really well. And then we went down to Cookie's Gym. Don't you remember James Cook? James Cook. I went down every Saturday, didn't I? Yeah. Saturdays you get down there on the train. Yeah. And they, they wanted you. And, uh, you know, but the way it is. And I went to the ball, didn't I? I think he's, mm. he's passed away now. I can't remember his name. I can't. We? Oh, <laughs> we're good, aren't we? Yeah. We've had too many hits. Yeah. But, yeah, whoever it was, I can't remember. But, yeah. But there was a lot of people back then when you was still amateur, you know. And uh, uh, Robert's asking... Would you say, um, thanks, Robert. It's not a loaded question. Paul won't answer this one truthfully. Would you say Russell is an especially gifted trainer? Ah, I'll get out of it, Robert. There must be millions of trainers better than I am. Well, thousands, hundreds, <laughs> dozens. You are, you are good oh, trainer. You, they are good trainer. You can back it up as well, which a lot of martial artists can't do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a load of old collars and they're just there to make the money, but you can back it up, which I beg to differ every time, as you can remember. That's yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a lot of bollocks out there. And then you you put it on me and hurt me. Yeah, back in yeah, the yeah, you are good training. You're something different. I mean, pressure point knockout it does look bollocks, but it does work, doesn't it? You look at it on yeah. YouTube and you think, you're having a laugh, but it does yeah. work. If it's applied yeah. right and you've got someone who's going to use it properly, it does work. Yeah, it's like anything. Isn't it? If you can do it, you can do it. If you can't, you can't. Yeah. yeah. It's that simple, isn't it? You know? Yes, Whip, I have got the secrets to a lovely Yorkshire pudding. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so it's too easy. Plain flour, make a hole in it, put your egg in, mix it up, gently add the milk, make sure the, the fat's red hot, then pour it in. Done. It's dead simple. Don't even measure job, it. Job it fish. Yeah, it's easy. It's or, easy. Gonna add to Lidl, pre made, bang it in the oven, sorted. Never do pre made, Paul. Never do pre made, won't yourself. Yeah, easy way out. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, another question for you. If there was one fighter you'd like to have fought and didn't fight, who was it and how would you get on? What, any any era or what? Or... From from anywhere, I'm assuming. Do you know what? Because he's my hero. Sounds, it sounds mad, but Tyson. The Tyson, no, not Tyson. The Tyson. Yeah, Iron Mike. Right. It ripped my jaw off in one shot, but... I'd, just the build up and everything would be amazing wouldn't it and get in you'd there make, with him Jesus you'd make a lot of money you'd make a lot of money you would for 10 seconds yeah yeah well yeah and per second it would be a lot <laughs> wouldn't it yeah. Yeah. yeah yes Scott I'm not just a chef I do train as well thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah so yeah um, okay last couple of questions for you these are quick ones for you Paul best heavyweight yeah. ever Mark Tyson. Yeah. I go I I go between Lennox Lewis and Larry Holmes. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I... because the, the aggression, the power, presence, and how nasty he was back in the day. He just didn't give a shit, did he? Animal. No. No. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to argue with it. It's all personal, isn't it? It's all personal. Yeah. So I'm assuming he's your favourite fighter as well, then, if you're saying... Because they're saying be the best heavyweight ever. Who's your favourite fighter of all time? Tyson. We haven't got a tattoo on my leg, have 
Yeah, yeah, good point. All right. Roberto Duran, best ever. End of story. Oh, turn out Prince Azim. I used to love Prince Azim. Yes, he was good. But for me, yeah. it's always going to be Roberto Duran. He's the best ever. End of and story. Sorry. Yeah, you're a bit older than me, yes, I didn't remember seeing you. Yeah, only a little bit. <laughs> only a little bit. A couple of years. <laughs> right. Um, and who do you, what do you think of Triple D? Unbelievable. Um, how he throws the hook the way he does and generates that power, I do not know. Because obviously, throwing it that way, which I've been taught, mm. and Tyson used to throw in everyone else. Yeah, we do. He turns it like, like, like the amateurs. Yeah, and Drops still gets the scoring. power. Yes, how he generates the power doing that, I do not know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah if he yeah, turned I'll it that it. way, if he turned it that way, he'd be hitting even harder. That's what I think. But he's just he's a machine, isn't he? Nice bloke, yeah. professional, in and out of yeah. the ring, bang on. So yeah. That's how far I think be. I think he's gonna be world champion. Mm. And I, I think he's gonna upset a lot of people, he's gonna knock a lot of people out. A lot of people out. Scott, you're not too far off with Nigel Ben, but he was a British world champion, really. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, back in them days, you bank Ben, that used to be good, didn't it? I mean, you used to watch that with mum and dad, and you'd watch it. You'd get all the info through the Sun newspaper, ITN News, mm. and that was that. Yeah. And it was all built, and then that was it, live on Central. Happy days. Yeah. The good old days of proper boxing, proper fights. It was, though, wasn't it? The fight, the fighters now, it's like all the strength and conditioning bollocks. Back in the day, you wouldn't have that. Ten years ago, you wouldn't have that. You do your skipping, you do your running, you do your only bags of pads, you do your sparring. You don't fucking lift a barbell above your head and snap a bit of laggy band there, laggy band there. Nah, that's you know all I mean? cobblers. Absolute power cobblers. Power and throwing the shot right. Obviously, you can yeah. turn that by using dumbbells for the hooks and stuff. I mean, do you know what? As, much, as cheesy as it sounds, if you watch the Rocky training. <laughs> yeah. Bang on! <laughs> you watching? Do you know what that makes sense? Well, old so, school type training. None of this silly stuff. Resistant band rubbish. It's just proper training. Tra train a proper technique, and you're lit harder. Yeah, now, Scott, using your hips, using your quads, using your shoulders. The snap. That's that's one thing. Well, I used to get banged out a lot. I throw the right hand, and I'll get caught with the right hand or left hand or whatever. But a lot of people don't. Boom! It's that snap. Whipping it yeah. back, getting it back, Boom. elbows in tight. Yeah. Now, Scott. You're saying that Paul's hands look bigger than mine on can't we? Now we've got a funny one here for you. <laughs> Paul will hate me for remembering this, but we used to call him Beetle. <laughs> right. hey, I've got small hands. I've got big knuckles. Where are we going? Where are we going? Right. I have, but I've got small hands, you know. I yeah. Beetle. Well, I've got my hands, although they don't look it, my hands are bigger than Paul's. Right. We used to call him Beetle. <laughs> right. But there you go. That was all fat. I, I had a crack reach as well. The reach was really crack, wasn't it? Short reach. Yeah, for, for your for your height, you had a short reach, didn't you? Well, oh, still ours. Yeah. For your height. Stumpy. T Rex. T Rex used to call me. <laughs> but that's why I had to well, get in. That's another thing. Defense as well. A lot of new fighters these days. I don't know why, but they don't seem to parry anymore. No. You know, it's all this. Parrying and counter. They don't do that. But sim, do you know what? I've got away with 41 fights. I don't think I'm too bashed up. Look, that's quite straight. Mm. It's keeping them hands open, keeping them tight, and catch everything on your forearms. Parry, yeah. move the head, step back. That's as simple as it is. A lot of kids these days, the nose is across there like that. The longevity is about three or four years, and they're done. So if you've got a nice defence, you keep your hands tight and you relax, you parry the shots. That's like, yeah. But that's, 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 a, that's a skill that people aren't teaching. And I think it's because there's too many weekend boxing trainers because it's only a weekend to get your aba assistant course and they don't understand things like parry and slip and and all that sort of stuff and the people aren't teaching it because yeah, it yeah, i don't know why yeah and and um you know I, I can't remember where it was now one of our guys was mentioning about being told um about moving your head too much or something and then, or you got to keep your head still, or something else. It was, it was a weird thing about the head. And I go, hold on a minute, no, you've got to be able to move the head properly. You know, you look at some of the old, old time fighters. Look at a great defensive fighter called Loche, and uh, just watch him. He, he just sometimes stands in front of his hands down, just moves his head, and just dodges the jabs and the 
punches as they're coming in. They, they're just whistling well, past him. Look at look Mayweather. At Everyone slates yeah. him. He's the best defensive fighter. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Stand in the pocket against world champions and not get it. And look at yeah. him, laughing at him, putting his hand up. You know what I mean? It's quality. Yeah. And like when we trained with Errol, look what he could do. And oh, he was... was yeah. Skipping. Remember him skipping? Love yes. to walk. 45 minutes later, he's still whipping out. I'm like, we haven't left. Unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah. Remember that day when he come down and we had a six hour skip before we started training? Yeah, mental. It was super fit. Yeah, nuts, nuts. But anyway, listen, we're, we're running out of time. Paul, thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure. You know, have you got any any last little story you want to tell us? <sighs> Do you know what? I could go on for hours that many. I remember last one, I think I made it a box. Denmark. Against Germany's number two. Some of my mates were coming here, they'll laugh because they've probably heard it about a thousand times anyway. But I was working the door a week before. I, I got it for a week's notice. Um, it kicked off downstairs at Tube Nightclub. I know that spot. So I, w- I went downstairs, kick- I pushed him out the door. And what the door didn't open, he rebounded back and hit me hand. Um, mm. Then I managed to get him out end of. And I went, went around to reception. I said to the AD, the bloke that was there, he was my boss. I said, I've done something to me hand. He goes, Who you it? I said, I ain't it no one. Because my fingers bent back. Because you're joking. What happened is I, I broke my knuckle. Metacarpal, I think it is. Went in hospital. We put a plaster in. Um, let me pull out this fight. It's against Edward Gerber. I think it was two in Germany. And I thought, I've never been Denmark. Sounds nice. So like an idiot, I cut the plaster off. We flew out. <laughs> went there with a broken hand. Um, doctor come in, checked me hand. And that's like, as he's squeezing it. Is your hand all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, on about Jamie Beadle hands because it was hurting that much. I asked for a bigger glove because my hands were so big. So I got bigger <laughs> gloves and I managed the last eight rounds. Week notice, broken hand. I managed the last eight rounds. He perforated my eardrum in round four and I still did eight rounds. Wow. Mental. So I like an idiot. And then I come back, put, got a plaster put back on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got paid well for it. Was, listen. I, I weren't really scared of anyone. I'll, t- I'll take him short. Who have got? I'll have a quick look on YouTube. I thought, yeah, we'll have it. And he used to like me going abroad because I'll go there, I'll go to the way, and I'll put my head on there and I'll push him and give him a little bit. And that's what, like, sold the fight. So that's why I got booked. I do eight or ten rounds. Nine times out of ten didn't go my way, but I'd have it. And that's what they like. So, yeah. Yeah, like you always, but I don't want to bore you with them. No, no, no. Yeah, bore us away anytime. But we're running out, we've run out of time now, Paul. So yeah, no worries. Again, a huge thank you to you. And uh, oh, no oh, oh, before we do it, I forgot to tell you all about this on Paul's Facebook thing. It's coming on your screen now. If you search that P for P boxing on Facebook, Paul's an admin of the group there. It's a load of boxing stuff. So anybody interested, yeah, you want to pound, 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 pound boxing. Yeah, it's coming up on as a ticker thing on the screen for people as yeah. well. So it'll be there. And on the replay that we put out tomorrow, it'll be on YouTube this world tomorrow. Well, it's on YouTube now, but the replay will be there on site and everything else. So this will always be there. And we'll put a link in there um, to Paul's Facebook group as well. And I suggest you get in touch with Paul on Facebook. Anybody who wants some, I don't know. Do I, 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 I can't post those because I've been banned for 30 days. Oh, yeah, he's been banned. You can yeah, message him, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps getting banned. But, um, yeah, um, you know, and hopefully, you know, get in touch with Paul and who knows, whatever. Stuff can happen. Again, Paul, great to see you again, mate. Look after yourself yeah, and I'll see you soon. All right. All right, mate. See you later. Bye. Bye. Cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers, mate.